The first verse I want to uh, just share with you, I mentioned it just a moment ago. For all the promises of God are in him, are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God. All of his promises are real and valid and forever settled. They're not going to change. Keep that in mind that they're not going to change. What God says is going to be, it's going to be. It would be interesting in some ways to have some kind of forethought of what, what that's all going to be like. But he tells us, and we have the truth, and we have that promise and that hope for us and with us. Here in the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, starting with verse 31, I'm going to start off reading about Israel here. Uh, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Remember that prophecy? Remember how it's come about? Remember how it is about now? How it's established for whosoever will? I hope you do. Is there anything rattling in there? <laughs> Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which uh, by my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in the hearts, their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man and his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. That's powerful. That's a wonderful new covenant. Every one of us have opportunity to be involved in. Amen. But he began with this prophecy, with this promise to Israel, as Jeremiah is recording this. Let's go a little bit more. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar, the Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord... Then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Something is in place that is forever. He calls it the ordinances concerning the sun and the moon and the light that they're shining. He says, Thus saith the Lord, If heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. What are you getting at, Pastor? I'm talking about exceeding great and precious promises. God provided a prophecy through Jeremiah who says in so many words, I'm going to make a new covenant, I'm going to forget their sins, everything's going to be wonderful and blessed forever and ever. That's the promise, that's the covenant, and it's forever established. And to compare the ordinances of the sun and of the moon and of the stars and the light they give, that's going to be going on forever and ever and ever and ever. So is that covenant that he made with Israel. That's how uh, powerful and valid it is with him saying, like, saying the words that he did concerning the sun and the moon. Turn to chapter 33. Chapter 33, starting with verse 19. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If you can break my covenant, of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers, and the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. Again, he's using the analogy or the comparison or however you want to describe it concerning the covenant or the ordinance that he has made with the sun and the moon and the stars and even the sands of the sea, that if any of that can be changed at all, which can't be because they're internal, he will keep his covenant with Israel. He'll keep his plans with David and his descendants. That's forever settled. Are you hearing me tonight? I'm talking about exceeding great and precious promises. His promises are yea and amen. So far, it hadn't exactly come down to you and I, but we're going to here in a minute. 
Have you ever thought about that? The laws of day and night, the covenant God has made with the sun and the moon is going to go on forever and ever and ever. And that's established. So are his promises. So, are his, so is his covenant with David and with children of Israel and so forth. Those promises are forever settled. He changes not. We can rely and have confidence and rejoice in the promise of God because they are yea and amen. Psalms 89. Let's back up to Psalms 89. Bless the Lord. He is righteous. He is holy. He is faithful. He is kind. He is merciful. Psalms 89, verse 34. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. Will you hear that? <laughs> Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. God swears. It's a righteous oath concerning David. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. You know what's going to last forever? His seed and the throne David's going to rule from. It's going to be forever and ever and ever, just as the covenant that God has made with the sun, the moon, and the stars, and you can't count the number of the sand of the sea. That's how far-reaching and real and valid his promises are. His seed shall endure forever, and his throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven. Amen. It's established, and it will always be a faithful witness. Faithful witness forever and ever and ever. Guess what? There are exceeding great and precious promises that are given to us that are just as valid and just as eternal. Will you hear that? <laughs> Amen. Psalms 104. Psalms chapter 104. Bless the Lord for his loving kindness and grace towards us. He is faithful. He is righteous. He is holy. He is due our praise, worship, and service. He is good. He is good. Hallelujah. I heard a little rust tap in that song a while ago. <clears throat> Psalms 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Do you have that vision in your heart? Do you have that in your mind? Do you envision your master, your heavenly father in this manner? Who coverest thyself with? with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain. We're reading words here that's talking about the glory and the splendor and the greatness of God Almighty. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can rely on that. We can rejoice in that. This ball of dirt we're on is going to be around for a long, long, long time. Amen. There's going to be changes in the future according to his word. But he's established this planet forever and ever and ever, just as he has the sun and the moon. I'm not talking, talking about necessarily astrology. I'm talking about what God has established to be real and forever, that his promises are forever, and they are yea and amen. They are so forever, removed for, not be removed forever. Psalm 78 and 69, I'll just read this for you. Are you ready? And he built his sanctuary like high palaces like the earth which he hath established forever. You want to hear what Ecclesiastes 1 and 4 says? I'm about to read it for you. One generation passes away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. If that's true, if that's really, really real, really, then what he's told Israel concerning a covenant is valid. What he said about his universe, it's valid. What he says about David and his throne and his seed, forever ruling and reigning, it's valid. Any and every promise that God has given us, they are valid. They are real. They are sure. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to read you three or four more verses here. You won't have to struggle. You won't even need a, a dolly or a cart. I'm just going to read it for you. 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Many other scriptures we can refer to concerning this concept in these two verses here. God has provided, he has established, he has promised exceeding great and precious promises. I'm about to finish with this one last verse. Are you ready? Are you willing to hear? 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having, therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You and I are responsible to take care of this for ourselves. Seeing then that we have these precious promises, we have an obligation to tend to ourselves, develop ourselves, get rid of filthiness, devote ourselves, grow ourselves. We have a responsibility. Amen. So that none of what I got through reading prior to this will ever be concerned, worried about, no doubt or fear, anything like that. Take care of business, so to speak, because his precious promises are valid and true. They are yea and amen, exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. Receive the word of God tonight. Know and have confidence in who he is and what he's done, of the covenants that he's made, that they're still in place and they're valid and they will be forever and ever. There's prophecies that's been ongoing forever and ever. Still some yet to, uh, to be provided and to develop and manifested. Certain things are going to happen. Let's be prepared and ready at any given moment, should the Lord call, should he come, that we're in a position that we're pleased with him and he's pleased with us. May the Lord richly bless you. What do you think about God's promises? Wonderful. What do you think about his covenants? Absolutely awesome. What do you think about him himself? Glory, awesome, magnified, we praise and glorify his precious name. Jesus Christ, who's seated at the right hand of the Father, who has already completed what's necessary for life to whosoever will. And he's continually serving and tending and praying and providing that we can experience these wonderful promises forever and ever and ever, of which all his creation is going to be around for a good while. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Allow the word of God to dwell richly in you, that his purpose and plan can be accomplished. Anyone need prayer tonight?